listening to Average Joe's Chess, a chess podcast made by average chess players, but exceptional lovers. mind if I uh, start off with a little joke out that someone told me this week? Tell us, Joe. I love it. Go for it. Okay. So this is courtesy from Luca. Uh, what's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? Timon. <laughs> <laughs> so shit. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> ah, Joe Furs. Is everyone going to have a good timing with our podcast today? Oh, they are going to have a beautiful time in today. It's um, it's the Halloween special. Oh, happy Halloween almost. Ooh, Halloween special episode 27. It's a Halloween special. What does that actually mean, Jofers? What is oh, a Halloween got, special? What does it entail? We've got some spooky stories coming up. We've got some funny stories. Ooh. We've got our usual bollocks. It's going to be a you good just time, don't, man. I can't wait. You don't know, do you? Don't know what's going on. No, not a clue. <laughs> what's coming no, up, Al? <laughs> what's coming up? We're going to talk about chess club, chess week, chess yep. challenges... Um, do you remember last week, uh, Bino asked a question about string mm-hmm. pants. Actually, oh, yeah. someone called Graham has answered that for us, amazingly. Oh, nice. So we'll read out Lovely. Graham's response. I know we've got a true um, crime story that I'm going to hit you up with. Quite an interesting yeah, one that's chess-related. That. Yeah. Oh, I've got a quiz for you as well. I forgot to mention. A quiz so. as well? Yeah, a nice little scary Halloween Holy chess shit. quiz. I know, man. How are we going to even fit all this in, Joe? That is a lot to cover. It's the exact same question you asked yourself when you was on that grinder challenge. Like, how am I going to fit all this in? Like, <laughs> it was a lot to cover, Jofers. <laughs> so where should Jofers. we start? Al? Well, wait, why don't we just start with chess week then? Uh, you are going to tell us about... Should I tell you about my chess week first, maybe? Yes, please. Um, just, you know what? My chess week has changed ra- uh, a lot over the last few weeks where I'm no longer doing all the bullet and blitz and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, I have had a, quite a few blitz matches late at night, 1am. Um, I don't know if you ever do this, like you having a good run of matches, so you don't want to stop till you lose, but it's getting ridiculously late and you know you have to get up the next day. And then you it's, lose all the points that you gain due to tiredness. And, yeah, sort of a reverse yeah. tilt in a way. You're doing really well, but then it's annoying you because you're doing too well okay. and want to stop. It <laughs> happened one night and then I lost all the other all the other points the next day, lost loads of matches. Um I've been playing a lot of the daily matches still, still playing um, quite a few of our good listeners out there um, and enjoying that quite a lot. Are you doing daily matches still, Jofers? Yeah, i got quite a few against the listeners as well. Um, some going good, some going not so good. Yeah, but uh, like yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying it, man. It's nice to... Because you have a little chat with them as well, kind of hear about the podcast, mm-hmm. hear about their lives and uh, the fact oh, that they're all brilliant. over the world as well. You get to hear about... I don't know, like, you know me, I love my geography. And so if I'm playing against someone in America or Haiti or wherever it is or Netherlands, it's just, I don't know, it's fun to hear about their lives. I like the way you drop in all those countries to make me jealous because I know those people, I think, who listen in though, like, you know, Haiti, <laughs> we've only got one listener. You're playing him at chess. I'm not. You're playing I'm not Casey. actually. Just, <laughs> I don't oh. know where I got Haiti from, but I, need to, <laughs> I should play it. <laughs> I'm currently playing, I think, the same people as you. Like, I have played over the last week GC Boom, mm-hmm. uh, Wrenches and Benches, playing TJP 1919. I looked at the stats between me and TJP, and on the daily chess, he's just whipped me every time i beat him maybe twice in blitz but generally I mean, it's funny me. you say this uh, when i recap you on my chess week i need to yeah it's going to involve a bit of uh tjp it's going to involve you it's going to involve a few other things nah, so man, let me know when you're done rambling and i'll hit you up let me keep rambling then i played Devonte <laughs> custard um we've also been playing gambit's queen or g4m yeah, yeah. bits queen um who is mrs boom She's been um, hitting me up with some funny jokes as well. Al. She's got all the one-liners. Uh, well, do you know what she did to me? Go she uh, actually uh, stole from me my rapid rating. So okay. she's rated, you know, she's new to chess, and that's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. And as we said before, we'll never criticise anybody's rating except yours and mine. But other than that, fair play, have a go, get stuck in. Um, and so in, in rapid, 10-minute match, she's only rated currently, I think, about one three two. Okay. My rating at the time was about 1,632, so about 1,500 above her. Mm-hmm. She beat me. Oh, it hurts. Oh, what happened to your rating? I bet that plummeted. 
I lost about 80 or 90 rating points. Oh, you know wow. what happened? She, we were chatting a bit. I was asking about mm-hmm. Mr. Boom, so on, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that was it. I was suddenly realised I'd chatted so much, I had about three minutes left. I was played. Oh, mate, mate you, you fell for it, man. That, that's her trap. That's why she's the Gambit Queen. I fell for the Gambit Queen's gambit of keeping me talking during the match. But um, <laughs> playing her Canterman, we had a really good end game going on. Where mm. it's just a, a, a lesson for us all. I had two rocks left and the, uh, and a queen. He yep. had one rock, one knight and a queen. So I'm up on material. I had pawns that could break, you know, break away if I wanted. But my pieces were inactive and he had squares covered with these pieces that meant I couldn't move. So my inactive pieces, even though I was up in material in theory, he just had to resign the game. There was no way through. A really good okay, game, made me think a lot. Um, ah, and we've been playing Invisible Chess. I think we've both been playing Jonathan from the Invisible Chess yeah, podcast yeah. in oh, the Battle of the Chess me podcast. In the tournament the other day. Oh, I'm, oh. Mm, mention that in a bit. Chris Scott, Bravarius, Bavarius, not Bravarius, been playing Bavarius. Just really enjoying it, enjoying these matches. However, I'm going to scale them back because they're taking up a lot of my time. So I might just this week play less people. Um, just for a no, week, because I've do got what I'm doing. Do the with. seven day challenges as opposed to the one day, so then you can just kind of space it out a bit. You can take three days to do a move. Don't people get really pissed off with you? Yeah, it's, it's part of the tactic, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, well, and then obviously, Joe, as I want to mention, Junk Trunk Tuesday, but I think that's in your recap, I imagine. So you tell us all about your chess week, Joe, what's been going on. So yeah, we had Junk Trunk Tuesday, um, which was a nice little tournament. I, did we have about 10 or so people enter? It was a mm-hmm. fun tournament. It was a nice intimate one. And um, so I enjoyed it. I, I think I came, I don't know, third, fourth. I can't really remember. It was it was an all right yeah, tournament. Came third <laughs> <for you. laughs> it, it was a fun tournament. I enjoyed it. Um, but I was looking back at, I mean, we played each other, didn't we? It's the first time in a tournament where we got paired up against it each is. other. And, and I'm surprised you mentioned it because I was actually giving you a good kick in for most of it, wasn't I? Yeah, but that's like saying, oh, we were winning 6-0 in football up until the 90th minute when you scored 12 goals. Like, <laughs> it's the end outcome that matters, <laughs> isn't it? Man, that's what you say. Go on. <laughs> but on top of that, so a lot of my chess week has just been looking at your chess week. And I looked back oh, at some of the... God. Seriously? <laughs> Why would you do of... that? Well, during the tournament, I don't get to watch your games because I'm playing my own games. But out of curiosity, being a little bit cheeky, it's like, I'll see how we got on in the tournament. And you played against my brother, Luca, so your nephew. Um, Oh, that was awful. (laughs) Okay, so I played Luca, your brother. That was my first match. You know my first games I don't do well in? Mm Mm-hmm. So I just completely missed a really simple checkmate that you got me with. I was overexcited. I get tournament nerves. Yeah, about 16 moves in, wasn't it, that one? Something like that. Go on. Yeah, yeah, so there was that. Um, you played against TJP, which I was mentioning earlier. So when you said his name, mm. I was like, oh, I've got to mention this. That Have you looked at that game back? Have you put it through the analysis? I have, actually. It was up and down a lot of it, wasn't it? It was up and down. You missed a, one, you missed a checkmate in one. You missed three checkmate in twos. <laughs> Um, you uh, you had pretty much you dominated like the the latter half of the game and then rather than getting the checkmate you thought you know what I'm going to be a bit different I'm going to stalemate him and give a draw which I thought was really yeah. interesting you know what I really like TJP um, <laughs> he's part of our chess family here and I just thought to myself this has been a very good battle the only fair result is a draw yeah, and so yeah, no, I, you know, I did not fall into his trap whatsoever and give him that draw uh, by accident it was all on purpose probably so nice, yeah. TJP, you're a lucky Go on, man. Go on, Joe. TJP, he had a few blunders against you. He looked like he was on top of you. It was like watching that game back. Oh, I'm watching our game back. Have you looked at that through the analysis? No. Nah. Analysis bar was so confused. It's like, what the fuck are they playing? It was just up, down, up, down. It's like every single every move I made gave you the advantage. Every move you made gave me the advantage. It was shocking. <laughs> it's tournaments, and it's. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, it was a three minute one, wasn't it? Three two. Yeah, yeah. 30 minute tournament with the 3 2 uh, blitz time frame. I'm not great at that. And you feel the pressure as well. I get I nervous, felt the pressure. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's about in. being in the tournament, especially with family and friends and everything. It's just, I don't know. I do feel a bit like, oh, God, I hope I don't. I don't know what it is, but I still love it, man. It was good. Any more Al horror stories you want to add? I'm sure there is. No. What's your recap? Carry on. Al, it's only an hour long podcast. Like, I can spend <laughs> six hours. Like, <laughs> but I think we should move on. Do you know- 
I just kept losing my connection. So the next game was a forfeit because I lost my connection. The only connection the next you was, game was, was the connection between your fucking hand and brain. Like some of the moves you're <laughs> making were shocking. <laughs> Jofas, I'd lost that a long time ago, mate. I'm, I can accept that. But I just want to say, you know, Invisible Chess Podcast Jonathan entered the tournament, which is great. Um, and he actually won it, didn't he? Yep, he did. He smashed he it. He won to be the fair. first uh, Junk Chunk Tuesday. So, as a prize, you're sending Jonathan your Junk Chunks, the ones full of holes that we've been doing that appeal for. You're going to send mm-hmm. him that prize. I understand. Is that correct? Yeah, he's a lucky man. He, and um, he's very lucky because he does blindfold chess, so he won't actually be able to see my boxes. So <laughs> it's a saving he grace for him. He won't even be able to feel them, Jofas. They're just holes. <laughs> There's just like a little bit of cloth. He'll be like, what the hell have I got here? <laughs> You know, but I went to the gym for the first time in about four months the other night. I forgot to tell you. And um, mm. I got and changed at the gym. So, you know, strip down to your boxers. I never go full commando. Strip down to my boxers, put my uh, my joggers on or my shorts and whatnot. Get out of my jeans. Uh, did my workout. And it's, it's a fairly busy gym. And it wasn't until I got home that the boxes that I'd picked out, because I'm very meticulous, I make sure they're not the holy ones. I didn't realise I've now got a pair of boxes with a massive gaping hole around the rear side. So that must have been on, <laughs> <laughs> that must have been on display for everyone. <laughs> so I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. So they're one, yeah, I'm going to have to be careful oh, when I wear God. those. The Jofa's invitation, all that is. That's it just is. asking really? for trouble. <laughs> yeah, so that wasn't good. But um, yeah, sh- enough about my ass. Shall we move on? Well, I was just going to say, with that appeal, you know, we put out an appeal. We paid that voice actor last week to do the appeal. Mm. Um, do you want to know the results? How much money we, we raised? How many donations came into our crowdfunder? Do you want Have to you maybe round it up to the nearest million? Yeah. So if I'm rounding it up to the nearest million, that's zero million. Wow, that's not bad, you know. So, uh, you know what I was thinking? As we've had zero donations, it tells me either people don't want to donate to our crowdfunder to buy you sexy panties. Mm-hmm. Um, either because one they just think it's ridiculous and don't want to donate two they don't want to see pictures of you in sexy panties or three they love the panties you've got they I love think... Joe's sexy panty holy boxer exactly. shorty things if they bought me uh pants with more material it's just gonna hide the good stuff like no one wants that <laughs> it's like it'd be like covering up the mona lisa like if you did that you'd be there'd be a mob after you uh-huh did you say good stuff or gut stuff? Like, is it your guts <laughs> that you fold into your <laughs> pants? Your gut stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to ditch that fundraiser, I think. We'll keep it going. I mean, it's still there if people want to donate. However, it inspired us, didn't it? We're creating our own um, Average Joe's chest range of clothing, mm-hmm. mugs, all sorts of things, aren't we? And you created this week. You sent me a, a oh, yeah. picture, didn't you? Some <laughs> bloody sexy men's and women's underwear with like our logo on them and oh mm-hmm. i am it, definitely it, buying some of them oh, honestly out it's um i was blown away at how turned on i got design in those pants like genuinely <laughs> it sounds it sounds far-fetched but <laughs> i was like these are actually really sexy like and i think first of all i don't know how many chess podcasts when they're going to do merchandise would instantly go for sexy pants i, I think we're probably yeah. an, a bit of an anom- anomaly there uh, mm. Secondly, I can see a lot of women wanting to buy these for their husband for Christmas. Genuinely, mm. like there, there's something else. It's got our logo. They're nice and tight. They're like, ah, oh, mate. There's going to be Ooh. some really sexy chess players out there this I, re- I actually really, genuinely love them. Um, I will be purchasing a pair for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, might purchase you a pair of the ladies' ones because I'm, Ooh, you know, yeah. just because that's sort of on call I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get them out there soon, won't we? We're working on this. We got our shop nearly ready. We've got some products designed you've got a week off work so yep. you're gonna work your ass off uh <laughs> <laughs> doing this sort of stuff joe Furs, that, oh man it's so good it's so good it's so good Looking talking forward. of bodies and whatnot shall i recap you on the challenge you sent me yeah i can't remember you, what i set you what did i you set you see, last week you give me the most fucking sick challenges and then you just forget it like it's nothing you set and forget i set and forget i like it i do because I don't see them as sick. We've discussed this before. I don't see them as tough. You know, dripping candle wax on your balls, going in ice baths, <laughs> playing chess. All the stuff I've set you is character building. It's to turn you into a stronger person, stronger chess player. Nothing wrong with that, Jofers. Then nothing it wrong is when with, it's but being set by your uncle. There's, there's got to be some kind of law against this. You are right. And that's why I erase it from my memory. Ah, so fair set, enough now. Then forget, because I don't want to think about that. It's sick. Nah, it's clever. 
I mean, this time you, uh, you, you teamed up with one of our subscribers and um, he's an army man. He wanted to toughen oh. me up a bit, didn't he? Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. I did remember that. I thought that was the week before. So you did nah, a bit nah. of pegging, didn't you? I did do a little... <laughs> so yeah, I got pegged by my uncle and one of our subscribers. And for people who don't know what pegging is, it's essentially when you get a clothes peg, I'm assuming. You get a clothes peg, put it on a piece of skin, <laughs> kind of <laughs> inflict a bit of pain like that. So yeah, so my pegging mm -hmm. virginity was taken this week. Um, and but it, it was, every time I lost a piece, I was challenged to put a peg on a piece of skin. And I think the pain it was causing me, it kind of made some kind of weird reaction in my brain where I think I misunderstood. I think I forgot what the challenge was halfway through the game. So every time, so I'd clip it onto my skin, but then I started clipping mm -hmm. the clips onto the clips themselves. And I had like this <laughs> meter, I had like a two, like a two meter long peg that's just kind of like protruding into my bedroom. Uh, so I'm just hoping no one was able to see this through the windows. They're just going to think I got like the most erect nipples <laughs> around or something. It was, it was a weird challenge. Or that you were being pegged by a two meter long peg. Ah, it's the dream, mate. It's the dream. Absolute dream. So that was the one challenge, but you sent me two challenges. The other one... Did I? I actually really enjoyed. You, 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 oh, you the movie. Pay attention was to it what movie? you said. Me. Movie? No. That was the week before. Okay. Uh... This week, you wanted me to uh, choose one of the classic games of chess and... Oh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, learn it off by heart, learn every single move, and then we're going to go through it on YouTube, and there's going to uh... be punishments for if I get... Uh... Oh, I get on. it. That's why you were looking at all my games this week. <laughs> there we go. You're the, you're the poor Morphe uh, of like 2023. Yeah, it's been said before. Never. But no, I loved it. Al, genuinely. So I chose the opera game, and I think. Oh yeah. I think I'm I'm shit at most things in life. Like I'm very self-deprecating. I'm not big-headed. I think I suck at 99.9% .9 of things. I'm just. I I very. I struggle through life. I'm not very good at many. Joe, things. this isn't a but... flipping therapy session again, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, but I can say the one thing it turns out I'm really good at is bloody remembering chess games. I memorized that game in its entirety and I'd say about three or four minutes. And now I think I'll have it for the rest of my life. Okay, then what on what is Black's move on move five? Okay, so uh, the, 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 um, they take your knight with a bishop. No, because I, I wasn't there, Joe first. Huh? They took. They, I wasn't there. They took Morphe's uh, knife. <laughs> so let, I'm not sure if it's move. Wait, wait let, oh, let me out. Uh, da, da, da. So, Joe, we don't need to know. Doesn't matter. We'll go through it on YouTube at some point. But I fucking loved oh, it, man. This is annoying for me because the challenge was you do that, and every time you get a move wrong, we're gonna pe put a peg on you. You know, you know, I'm into the pegging now, so I think I'm just gonna so we can just do that. get something wrong. It's like, oh no. Uh, I okay, every time you get a move right, we'll we'll put a peg on you. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> I'll take you up I'm on that. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Mate, yeah, this could be a new thing for you, learning loads of classic chess games. I think so. It could be a fun little drinking game we could do as well. Like every single time we get... So, I don't know. I don't oh, know. God, just we know how to party, don't we? Oh. <laughs> oh, Why don't we get If anybody wants to well? join me and Jofers for a drink and a party and a memorization of chess party, <laughs> oh, then wild, we'll, we'll arrange it. Maybe what we should do that, Jofers. We'll go out in Birmingham one night and, uh, yeah, maybe we can meet somebody <laughs> for a, a chess party. Yeah, moving on. How was your uh, chat? <laughs> <laughs> um, how was my chat? Okay, you challenged me to guerrilla marketing, didn't you? I did. Okay, so I knew I didn't even know what that was. I've looked it up. I've read there's been some interesting guerrilla marketing fails over the year, mm -hmm. over the years. Um, I didn't want to fail, but I also didn't realise that gorilla wasn't like a gorilla. It's gorilla with G U E, that sort of a gorilla, not yep. a gorilla. Um, but anyway, Joe, as I struggled, man, I thought and I thought and I couldn't come up with anything. But then what I have come up with, I've sent you a picture of it. Have you seen that? I have. I have. So what I've done, I've got a, I bought a painting this week. It's a, a print, like well, it's a painting that somebody has done of a market, um, and then in a sort of Mister Brainwash type style, I have uh, cut out a picture of a gorilla and stuck it in the market, and then I've crossed out their name, and I've put the average Joe's chest name there. So it's a gorilla marketing. I feel, <laughs> I feel as though you may have slightly misunderstood the task at hand, but I'll take it. Listen, I've just gone around the task in a different way. So now yeah, I'm going to yeah. market the guerrilla marketing. Um, I'm going to hang that on the wall in the local art gallery and see if Ooh. they notice and just leave it there for a little bit. I'm going to see if I can sneak. So what I'm going to do is go into the gallery. They've got some paintings by a guy called Dali or something. Never heard um, of 
Salva, Salvatore or Salva something. So, yeah. I'm going to go in there. Loser. I'm going to remove one of his pictures from the wall yep. and take it home. And I'm going to replace it with the guerrilla marketing one and see if they notice. See what happens. See that that's true genius. Not like this. Fucking, Should generate this a bit of publicity Salvatore for the show. Or... Yeah, yeah, sod him. him. It'll generate publicity. It will, it will do a lot of. It will, it will work some wonders that will for the art gallery. They'll appreciate that. So yeah, that's what I did. Jobs. I'm also curious. Did you get any responses back from your challenge the week before your um, letter you were going to send to employers, or haven't you sent it as yet? So I haven't got any responses, but I have noticed that I'm being monitored by the local police, which is that's that's new and interesting. That's fair enough. That's good. And yeah. um, what you any got for me this week, Jofers? Uh For this week, um, so as you know, Beano came in, and he, it turns out he's a big fan of the podcast. He uh, he's mm-hmm. at, he asked a question last week, but he's also now kind of chiming in with a few challenges for you, and they're fucking oh. good, man. That I love Seriously. them. Seriously. They're really good. I'm not going to go with one this week, but I think from next week onwards, I'm going to be calling him up. I'm going to be like, you got to help me out because I've run out of ideas. I'm not an ideas man. But the one I've got for you this week, um, you, you're a musician, aren't you? You enjoy your music. You enjoy making music. Love it. You love it. You're, you're going to put me off it for life. Yeah. <laughs> I just want you to, I mean, you're from quite a posh area of the country and you're not originally, you're scum like me, but you moved to quite a yeah. nice part. Um, I do. You kind of... Forgot your roots, you kind of ditched the whole working class thing and, I don't know, went a bit upmarket. Um, uh-huh. You're a bit of a ponce. Uh, so basically what I want you to do is to go back to your original roots. I want you to create ponce. a bit of a rap song about chess. I want you to go all in, proper gangster <laughs> rap. I mean, you can do it in oh. your new kind of posh accent or you can go back to your okay. old school roots or whatever you want to do, man. Just have fun with okay. it. Okay, a rap, rap song. Can it be like... Anything like a grime type song or anything. You, you know all the words, don't you? Yeah, it can be grime. Oh, yeah. It can be whatever you want. Yeah, okay. Can I get somebody in to help me on this if I need to? Of course, of course. Perfect. I've got someone in mind. You're going to go on like cool. rentagangster.com. <laughs> <laughs> There's loads of them in this town. Um, perfect. Perfect. I love that. Thank you. I'll, I'll give that a go. I, mm-hmm. I won't perform it live, but maybe I'll... Nah. I'll I lay down a track, Joe first, and drop it Ooh. next week. How did I get on with that bit of lingo there? Did that make lay down? Make it, it that sound was like, beautiful. Uh, some good lingo. Yeah, drop it. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you, Joe. Free for you. Um, as ne- as this week is our Halloween special. I mean, it's been Ooh. very scary so far. And uh, <laughs> next week will be bonfire night. Mm, it will. Um, so, uh, Bonfire Night, Guy Fawkes, Bonfire Night. It's on November the 5th in the UK. I think we probably... Let me guess, you want me to set up a firework it. up my arse every time I lose a piece in chess. Something really messed up. Right, should we go into the next section now, you <laughs> guessed your challenge? <laughs> <Even> up, <yeah. laughs> you've go got on. to jump over a bonfire. <laughs> um, you've got to play chess whilst lying in a bonfire. Easy. Now, Let's the bonfire, it. Can, have, it can have gone out if you want. No, that isn't your challenge. <clears throat> uh, I had, I couldn't decide. So, firstly, I was going to go for a musical one for you as well, but you Ooh. setting one for me has made me change my mind. I was going to get you to rewrite the lyrics of Katy Perry's Fireworks, as fireworks okay. are set off on November the 5th, to be a chess uh-huh. song instead. Um, but then I also thought it's Guy Fawkes Night, uh, and obviously yeah. Fawkes is a chess term. I know it's mm-hmm. spelt different for that dude, but this is, it's Fawkes. And I was thinking it'd be really cool for you to walk around with a fork in your pocket at most times. Yeah. Show it sticking out. I mean, if you're wearing a breast pocket, even better. <laughs> but you're not at work this week, so maybe this won't work. I wanted it just sticking out. And then any time anybody asks you about the fork, you give them a chess pawn. Oh, okay, okay. That's fair enough. Yeah, I like that. Now, you could use something else as well as a fork. You could put a pin into your routine, or you could put okay. a skewer... Um, mm. You could put something checking, you know, made of check. I don't know yep. anything you want, but give people chess puns and just see what their reactions are. Strangers, hopefully, people on the bus, people in. You going to a party this weekend? Maybe try and do a few there. And and the second part of the challenge, if you get the opportunity again, I forgot you weren't at college. I was going to challenge you, get you to challenge a student to a game of chess, but you could challenge oh. a friend, mate. But only move your pieces using the fork. Okay. Yeah, because if there's one thing they like at a bit of a rough college that I work at is to bring a weapon like a fork into <laughs> into the college, that's going to go down a tree with the security guard. I'm guards. not talking a bloody pitchfork, Joe. I'm just talking about a bit of cutlery here. You don't have to turn up with a pitchfork and start impaling like. People. I just love how I spent my it's whole life at work begging students not to bring knives into college, and now I'm going to bring in a fucking fork. <laughs> Blunt the edges if it makes you feel any better. Blunt all those edges off. Okay. 
Yeah, let's do it, man. I I'm happy to give that a go. I'm happy to give that a go. Let's do it. Lovely, Joe. First, like that. What what you got for us now, then? What do you want to do? Mean, I've got a bit of a uh, bit of a scary chess related quiz for you. If you want to oh, get into the Halloween let's vibe, let's get spooky. Do it. Let's... Right, I'm gonna cue some scary music. I think, um, or at least future Joe is gonna edit some in. Uh, yeah, should we just go for it? Some of them are a bit sick, but obviously it's Halloween. It, it's what it's all about, sort of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so question number one. Pepin the Short, which is an amazing name. I don't know who that is, but yeah. Pepin the Short was said to have killed his opponent, Prince Ocarius of Bavaria. But how? Did he A, beat him to death with his rook? Did he B, force the prince to choke on his bishop? Or did he C... Uh, lace the opponent's. <laughs> <laughs> did he see laced his uh, opponent's chess pieces with poison? So which one of those did he do? I mean, obviously, poison is probably the most sensible answer, I would say. Uh huh. But what was the four? What was the rock one again? Uh, he bludgeoned him to death with his rock. How can you do? I mean, what size were these pieces, or how big are these guys? I mean, if the guys, Ooh. like if the guys were dwarves. Then obviously the piece is proportionally bigger. I mean, he was called Pepin the Short. <laughs> he was called Pepin the Short. Ooh, I'm gonna go for bludgeoning with the rook. I mean, I can really? picture that. It's just yeah, he's bludgeoning him with his rook. <laughs> take that. Why are you smiling? So <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you like that? <laughs> bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Am I right? You are right. Well done. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Smashing the rook. Seriously, he bludgeoned. Yeah. I Bludgeon thought the same thing as you. I was like, rock. And then I started thinking, which piece would you go for? But it would be the rock. That is the the perfect one. But it's still not big enough or hard enough unless... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if oh, the, he was short, maybe his opponent's short. So he's got small hands. There's a lot of mm. surface area of the rook showing. But to bludgeon... I mean, I, I can, can imagine... I can see a future challenge way... coming up, Al. <laughs> <laughs> can you bludgeon me to death with a rook? <laughs> yeah. I'll give it a try. But there's... I, I, how I mean, would you, you could do use that? that well, you know, I, I've done uh, self-defense and Krav Maga and stuff, and they mm -hmm. teach us about improvised weaponry. So I would say it'd be better to... Uh, and the disclaimer here, don't do this, uh, anybody <laughs> listening in. I don't want to be held responsible. But you could use it to strike someone in the temples, maybe mm -hmm. windpipe. But bludgeon means to sort of bash their head in. It does. I mean, I'm going to go... After this, I'm going to leave this studio, go in the house, and I am going to try and bludgeon myself with a rock for a little bit and see how I get on. <laughs> I love it. I'll make sure to post, post it to social media so we can all see the results. I'll, I'll post some pictures. Love that one. You got yeah, any more? So, oh, mate, I've got about five or six more. So, um, in a game between King Canute and Earl Ulf, which are some weird names, um, Mr. Ulf flipped the board in anger after King Canute took back a move. Uh, what happened next? A. The game resumed peacefully. B. The king ordered the L to be executed. Or C. They put their differences aside and created a chess podcast where they talked mostly about their genitalia and torn boxes. Ooh. <laughs> well, that chess podcast one is just a stupid idea. Nobody in their right mind <laughs> would, would do, do that. that? <laughs> who, would do, who would want to listen to some twats talking about boxer shorts? It's, oh, it's no. not going to be that one. No. Uh, he's a king and the other so he's got the power to execute people mm -hmm. and I haven't got the power to memorise all three answers so I can't <laughs> remember what the third option was so I'm going to go for the execution Al you are on fire you are smashing it <laughs> yeah, I know. imagine someone just flips the board on you and you're just like yeah I'm just going to execute that it's just, it's just uh, yeah I love that wow. kind of I well, don't love it who but flipped just... the board the king or the other guy the um wait no, so the king took his move back, so he made a bad move. He's like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to take that back. Let me take it back. The That's other naughty. guy flipped the board. He's like, oh, I'm fucking done with you. And he's like, all right, I'll execute you. And then, yeah, end of story. Jesus. Wow. Hello, beautiful. Do you want another what question? What a chess club. Oh, I want, yeah, bring them on. All right. So, question number three. A French prince, not to be confused with Fresh Prince of Bella. <laughs> so, a, a, a French prince was clobbered to death with a chessboard after checkmating their opponent. But who was that opponent, Al? Was it A, Magnus Coulson? Was it B, Judith Polgar? Or was it C, William the Conqueror? Hmm. Talk me, okay. talk me through your thinking. My thinking is Magnus bludgeoning somebody with a chess board mm. he, Magnus as we know has got a photographic what was the word Jesse used? Ed, 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 edetic. edetic or something like that? 
memory. If he's picturing that, imagine the positions he's going to be picturing afterwards of mm. this guy's bloody brains on a chessboard. He's not going to want that. He's not no, going to. That messes chess. That. Us. It's not Magnus. Yeah. Judith, I think, is a nice person. The impression I get of Judith, she's nice. I don't think she's going to be going around bashing people's brains in with chess boards. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've heard William, good things about William the Conqueror. I don't know. Yeah, you've heard a lot of good things yeah. about Will. He was good at conquers. Like, during the autumn time, he came alive on the conquer court. He was brilliant at conquers. But what do you do with conquers? You hit them hard against things. It's true. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of it like that, Al. I, I'm just going to have to go for Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go right. for William the Conqueror. <laughs> it was William the Conqueror, can you believe that? What a bastard. I know, yeah. It's a, um, yeah, what a bastard. What sort of chessboard? Uh, it can't be one of those cardboardy shit ones. It must be a proper solid chessboard. That's it. These old folks, they tend to be able to bludgeon someone to death with pretty much anything. Like the next one would be like anything. bludgeon to death with a feather or a fucking. I don't, I don't know how they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> they found a way. So, question number four A game of chess took place in 1120 uh, between King Henry. The first of England and Francis Louis V. Well, no, that's five in it. <laughs> Louis <laughs> Louis the fifth. Um, but what happened? <laughs> but what happened next? A. The two were brutally mauled to death by a pack of beavers. B. The Frenchmen resigned after move two. That's a bit of casual racism about them resigning early in wars and whatnot. Uh, or okay. C. The game triggered a twelve-year war. Oh, seriously, mm. a chess game would could potentially trigger a war really i think so it's very intense very serious stuff back then Mm. playing for honor playing for pride but also it can trigger angry beavers (laughs) the well-known fact i think that cheska is a trigger thing for beavers isn't it i mean uh, have you have you got much experience with beaver joe (laughs) it's for another time i'll it's for another time i mean i know if you were playing chess whilst looking at beavers the beavers would get potentially quite angry that you're not paying them enough attention and you're looking at chess. It's true, it's true. So, um, 12-year war, Joffrey. You would be correct, Al. You, you've got every single one correct. You, you're smashing oh, it. We've got two I'm more. I'm loving it. Two more questions. Two can more? I keep I, I a 100% score? I think you can. Um, so... Question number five or six. Um, there's a bloke called Al Walid. Um, this is like old, old school. This is. Uh, so Al Walid killed his royal assistant by throwing his queen at his head. What prompted this little outburst? Was it A, Al Walid found out his assistant, uh, his assistant, sorry, was a notorious criminal? Was it B, Al Walid found out his assistant had been deliberately losing his games against him? Was it C, Al Walid found out his assistant had been shagging his wife? His own wife or Al Walid's wife? Al Walid's wife. I don't think he'd be too angry if he was shagging his own wife. I think that's fine. You don't think so? How did no, he, What did he do to him? I've, I've written it down, but I can't find he, he... He threw a queen at his head and killed him. Oh, is that symbolic at all with the queen? So, he was shagging his wife, mm-hmm. losing on deliberately. Yeah, so like I going was, easy on the king. What was I? Not... He, he was a notorious uh, criminal, so he came to light no, that I he put had this not, back. not cream, so he was a notorious not, criminal. <laughs> he was a I don't cream. think he... He wasn't a not cream. Uh, he could... This is a tricky one, because he mm. could have been shagging the guy's wife. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, he's a chess player. Chess players don't engage in that sort of behaviour. They're thinking <laughs> they about chess game. all the time. <laughs> they haven't got game like that. Um, uh, he would lose deliberately, I reckon. A friend of mine used to do that all the time. He used to play his dad at squash at weekends yeah. and just let his dad win every time, even though That's he was cute. far better than his dad until the day his dad pissed him off. And then he, I said, you still let your dad win? He went, oh, no, I gave him a right good shoeing this weekend. Really? And just put his dad <laughs> in his place. So I reckon B, losing. You'd be correct. Well done. What? There you go. Oh, you won oh, question away from 100%. 10 out of 10 so far. This is yeah, genuinely smashing it, mate. Um... All right, here's the final question. Oh, good luck, good luck. Um, and this is a more recent man. one as well. All the other ones are old school, but I was looking into, are there any recent kind of scary chess stories? Mm-hmm. And in Dublin in 2014, Severio Belante stabbed his landlord, Tom O'Gorman, to death. But why? Was it A, because O'Gorman called Belante's uh, king move stupid and perverse? 
Was it B, O'Gorman <laughs> called Belante a stupid pervert? Or was it C, O'Gorman called the Average Joe's Chess Podcast overrated and a load of bollocks? Okay, well, you're not going to stab someone to death for saying something accurate, so it's not C. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he call him a stupid pervert unless they were playing chess naked or with you, Joe Furs, mm. and you were getting up to all sorts of things? I, I don't think so. I think stupid, perverted move, did you say? Perverse. Stupid and perverse. Or was it stupid, pervert? I think it's a stupid, perverse move. I don't know what that could have been. I, I would. I suppose about to say I'd like to see, I'd like to know, but I wouldn't. That'd be horrible. Yeah, no. Go for it, Joe Furs. Answer. Bing, you're correct, man. Ah! Well done. <laughs> Go on out. Got 100 Woo! out of 100. <laughs> Smashing it, mate. <laughs> that was actually impressive, man. 100 out of 100. Albeit on quite a sick murder-related quiz. It's, uh, yeah, I've got my suspicions about you, Al. Oh, so you should have Joe first. So Maybe Ali Shaw for Al Walid. Maybe you are the guy who killed his I'm assistant. I'm yeah. saying nothing, Joe Fuzz. Um Mainly because I'm shell shocked that I got like what was no, it, 150 play, out of 100? And well, I got loads right, didn't I? You smashed it, genuinely. Well done. Oh, nice quiz, Joe Fuzz. I love that Thank one. Uh, Al, oh. shall we go on to some um, some scary stories? Let's kind of keep running with our theme, and uh, I don't know. Try your best to scare me. I heard you made a little bit of a uh, a scary story for me. Well, I thought the brief was from you midweek. We both write a scary story and then mm-hmm. we'll decide whose story or let, let you out there decide whose story was scarier. However, you haven't written a story, have you? You've just got a scary story. So I've come up with some, but you've also got one that is based on fact. Yep. Yeah, I can I can read my um, scary story to you. Just give me a second. Before I do, do that, Joe, for scary music on? While you're looking for that scary music, I just wanted to to mention Beano again because mm-hmm. I do you know what I'm a bit like worn out with the scary stuff. I need a little light hearted break. Yeah, let's rest. Um, and last week we asked uh, Beano asked a question, which was if string vests are uh, okay to wear, why not string pants? It's a good question. I'm so with I know your your grandma got involved so we asked people to see you know to write in let us know we gave our opinion your grandma got involved my mom sending us a picture of some string pants that are actually available to buy have you bought some i'm making my own out of my regular boxes okay fair enough uh believe it or not (laughs) believe it we actually had an email someone responded to this someone called graham wrote in that's graham with an a e did you know you could spell Graham that way without the H? If you can spell it wrong, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he, he wrote, let me just find here. Here we go. He wrote, I've given Beano's question much thought, and in my opinion, string pants would not be worth wearing. Don't mm-hmm. you just love that someone's written in to tell us oh, that? Oh, I love it, man. Um, but they, they carry on, actually. They put, the purpose of a string vest is to trap air and keep your torso warm, but who wants a warm ball bag? Not me. <laughs> 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 also unless you are shaved below then your pubes get tangled in the string if you send me a pair i'm willing to prove all of this and send you some pictures oh yeah let's take him up on so the other we on, need graham. to send graham a pair of string pants get those pictures on <laughs> he then continues he put, i have a chess oh, question for you so continuing this now which i love graham's asked mm-hmm. a question maybe somebody else it'd be great to have more than one person write in and give us an answer his question is What's the most expensive chess set ever sold? Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I think we could... Yeah, actually, I was just about to say that, but he put, I know I could Google this, but I thought I'd put it out there. Also, how much oh. would you pay for one? Um, Joe Fuzz, what would you pay for a chess set? Oh, you know what? For the right chess set, I'd go up to 50 quid, I'd say. I know that's probably really? not that much, but to me, that's a lot to spend on anything. Yeah, fair enough. Um, he's put in your shop, how about selling a chess set? which I really like the idea of that. He's put all the pieces are modelled on you and Joe and could be naked, maybe like Greek statues. (laughs) That'd be amazing. Imagine all these Greek statues, like poses, me and you just standing there. (laughs) That'd be beautiful, man. Obviously, we'd have to be generous and uh, kind of big ourselves up a little bit. 
Oh, Graham, I love that. Thank you. So we've got these questions. If anyone out there wants to answer, how much would you uh, spend on a chess set? What's the most expensive? How much have you spent on a chess set, etc.? And um, any designs for chess sets that, that you'd like to see? Um, so thank you, Graham. Thank you, Bino. And I just wanted to add to that. We're adding something to our website, um, averagejoeschess.com, where you can send in a voice note so you'll be able to just record replies um, and if you're happy for us to play them out we can play out your your voice your voice note on our show at some point Amazing. Uh, which could be scary so shall we use that beautiful link there to talk scary stories Joe first yeah. talking of scary I can, I can smell burning so I'm just going to check my house isn't on fire give me two secs oh Joe first where is your uh, commitment to the podcast <laughs> sorry just the old you wouldn't be test, willing to, uh, to record in a burning house, is your? No, I, I think we're fine. I can't hear screaming so? or anything yet, so I think we've got a good five minutes, even if it is on fire. I did, you know what? Before screaming, I reckon smoke inhalation would just cancel the screaming out. They're probably unconscious yeah. down there. You sure you want to? Don't want to take a break? Just check everyone's all right. No, I just don't want them screaming because it interferes with the audio quality. But if they're unconscious yeah. downstairs, perfect. Let's rock That's on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done it on purpose? <laughs> Just some peace and quiet for once. Is your nephew visiting and you're just trying to get the kids quiet by a bit of smoke inhalation? Well, that's the thing. He's free now. So he's at that kind of like uh, kind of arsonist stage of his life. And he's probably just set a little fire downstairs. He'll be fine. It could have been him. He'll be fine. He'll be all right. He'll walk it off. So you want my scary chest story? Hit me up, Al. Come on, man. I want to be. I want to see some. A a warning to you all. It is very scary, everybody. And it's also. um, yeah, unfortunately, it's quite long. I found it very hard to, to get it compacted into a short story. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to skip forward three minutes, I don't blame you. Four minutes. You know what, Al? Still it's be, winter. Still be well, it's autumn. Up. I'm going to get a nice blanket. I'm just going to enjoy the story, man. Hit me up. Yeah. I think, yeah, everybody sit down, relax, you know, shut your eyes, listen to the story. Um, okay, let me just get myself in the mood here, Joe, first. Thinking scary thoughts. Okay. Here we go. What are you thinking of? What are the scary thoughts? Oh, I was just picturing you in those pants in the gym with a hole in the bomb. <laughs> and the idea of you not being there was scary. He's like, oh, I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Not so long ago, on a humid summer night somewhere near you. It's going to be three minutes of this voice. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I know. I oh, know. And I'm going to. We should have done it at the end of the podcast because then, like, my scratchy throat won't matter. <laughs> God. Jesus. Anyway, let's count. An enthusiastic yet totally average chess enthusiast called Joe decided to cool off by stripping down to his underwear. This in itself was not unusual. However, on this occasion, he was visiting his charming uncle who lived in a cabin in the woods some 100 to miles have- away. I think you've uh, misunderstood the difference between scary and sexy. I can see where this is going and I'm all for it, but (laughs) this is for the Valentine's Day special, not the Halloween. (laughs) Oh, Joe first. His uncle, also an average chess player, but an exceptional lover, often enjoyed the delights of bathing outdoors in an ice bath. He kept the water cold and clean and practiced impeccable hygiene at all times. As such, he wasn't too keen on allowing anyone else to use his ice bath, especially people that were known to wear underwear riddled with holes. Happy that his feckless nephew had decided to visit, Joe's uncle left him alone in the cabin as he drove into town to buy Joe's favourite food, baked beans. It was at this point that Joe thought that he would take the opportunity to cool off his bearded bagpipes in the aforementioned ice bath. (laughs) Checking that no one was watching and knowing that he had at least 20 minutes to himself, Joe approached the ice bath with gay abandon. He gingerly stepped in and tried hard to stifle his high-pitched screams as the freezing water lapped his penis boobies. Eventually, Joe calmed down and relaxed into the experience, taking in his idyllic surroundings as if for the first time he noticed on a table next to the ice bath a chessboard with beautiful hand-carved chess pieces. 
for some inexplicable reason, he felt compelled to reach out and handle the bishop. <laughs> As he picked it... <laughs> Oh dear! Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on! I've lost my Sorry. place. <laughs> my laugh had erupted. You shouldn't laugh at bishops, Joe Fuzz. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I'm out of the moment now. Should we just leave it there? No, Part I don't know. Crack on now. Okay, okay. For some inexplicable reason, he felt compelled to reach out and handle the bishop. As he picked it up and felt its beautiful smooth surface, solid feel and heavy weight, (laughs) heavy weight, he couldn't help but feel a strange sense of jealousy and excitement overwhelm him. What if, he thought. (laughs) Oh, what, what if? Oh, come on, that's not what I sound like. (laughs) But before he had a chance... But before he had a chance to finish his perverse thought, he was startled out of his trance by the sound of an approaching vehicle. Not wanting to fire his handsome and strong uncle's fury, he quickly jumped out of the ice bath. Looking down, he realised that his threadbare excuse for boxer shorts had dissolved into the icy water. Gazing into its now murky and slimy depths, he also realised that he had dropped the bishop. He was about to reach in and retrieve it when he heard his uncle's car door shut. He ran back to the cabin and dried off before his intelligent uncle could suspect that something untoward had happened. After an evening of pleasurable feasting, music and chess, Joe, unable to keep up with his uncle's hard partying, made his excuses and (laughs) retired to bed. Not wanting the evening to be over yet, his uncle decided to take a late night evening dip in the ice bath. He confidently stepped in and he put his head and let out a satisfying grunt as the ice cold water licked his beautifully toned body. As was his habit. As was his habit, he put his head under the water, but at that very moment as he lowered himself, his feet slipped on the bottom of the bath, allowing the bishop that Joe had failed to remove to enter his booty pipe. He let out a gasp, and Joe's pant-infused grime water entered his lungs, causing him to choke to death. The next morning, when Joe rose from his slumber, he made his way downstairs. Not seeing his uncle anywhere, he ventured into the garden. Uncle, he called. (laughs) Uncle, are you out here? Hearing no reply, he made his way over to the ice bath, thinking his stud of an uncle had taken an early morning dip. (laughs) (laughs) An early morning dick was that out? <laughs> not this going. time, Joe first, not this time. It was then that he saw him, his uncle, skin all blistered from the pant water, floating in the bath with a chess piece sticking out of his bunghole. In a fit of blind panic and knowing that he was to blame, Joe tried hard to drag his uncle out of the bath. My God, he was a fine figure of a man, he thought. (laughs) As he he held his dead uncle in his arms, a sense of guilt overwhelmed him, as as did an uncontrollable urge to remove the bishop. He reached his hand between his uncle's muscular buttocks and pulled out the finely carved (laughs) chess piece. Raising it to his nose, he couldn't resist. (laughs) He couldn't resist a little sniff. (laughs) Who wrote this shit? (laughs) It was as if time stood still. He inhaled deeply, and it was as if some stink-ridden bum genie was entering his very being. He realised too late that he was being penetrated by his uncle's ghost. (laughs) Might have been a bad choice of words there. It's a bad choice of words. (laughs) A chequered gas was escaping from his uncle's starfish. 
<laughs> it was too late. Joe had inhaled too much. His brain was filled with a thousand episodes of Average Joe's Chess podcast oh. playing at once. His uncle voice repeating over and over, Your challenge this week, Joe Fuss, is to sniff my bishop. My big, beautiful bishop! <laughs> Madness took over Joe, and he was committed to a psychiatric hospital where he spends his days fondling and sniffing the resident's bishops. Let this be a warning to all out there. Pay heed to old, wiser uncles at all times, and never, ever sniff a bishop, or Joe's uncle might just haunt you. Oh, wow, that You're shitting yourself me, now, aren't you? You are shitting oh, it. Tell God. me the truth. I need to turn a light on. <laughs> that is that has genuinely got me mortified out on many has different really? levels. That was beautiful. We could sell on this in a children's levels. book. Do you think so? Yeah, I think people would pay good money for that. It's very creative. There's actually um, there's a children's author, that, a children's chess book author that is in our mm. chess club. Uh, we follow Ooh. each other on Twitter. I could mention okay. it to her. You think that's an interesting story for kids? I think so. And like on a side thing, we could also sell that used bishop. I think that could bring in some good money. <laughs> that is good. The pool water as well. Bottle that up straight away. Oh, uh, I was also trying to be very modest describing the uncle. I don't know if it came across yeah, as that. I don't know if you realise, but occasionally you'd kind of maybe tweak the truth ever so slightly. Mm, yeah, Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, that, that was my scary story for a Halloween special. Hope you enjoyed that one out there. Hope um, you're not going to have nightmares tonight or send in requests to the podcast for any stinky bishops or anything like yeah. that. And, uh... You know what, Al? I'm about, I was going to tell you this true crime story, which is actually true, about murders and suspense and mystery and just a pure evil. But it's not going to compare to the scary story you just told. It's going to sound like a like a little old folk tale, like a lovely little... Oh, oh, nothing. Oh. Nothing can compare to that. But Jofers, you know what? I think we all need to, to take a deep breath and, and like mm-hmm. try and erase that from our memories now. So yeah. maybe replace it with something that you've got for us. I'm just going to take a drink. So there might be a bit of bottle noise opening here. But, you know, my voice sounds like I've just smoked yeah. a million something or others. Like you've just snorted your dirty ass bishop from the story. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, your vocal cords are haunted. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's go a bit more light-hearted with a, um, a talk about a genuine serial killer that involves chess and this and that. It's a true story. It's which a, tr- I've, um, a true story. True story that I've nabbed from a true crime podcast. Uh, so probably it's not legal what I'm doing. I'm just I'm resharing the story that they shared to me and uh, showing it to a chess audience. I'm sure that'd be fine. Illegal. Doesn't matter. Like yeah. <laughs> Illegal schmiegel. Um, so... There's a young boy called Alexander growing up in a really poor part of Russia. We're talking like really poor Soviet Union kind of uh, collapse, all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, He got bullied at school uh, and he struggled to socialize. Uh, I think they then took him out of school and he left his mom's home and moved in with his granddad. But his granddad realized he was struggling socially and that he wasn't good at school. But he noticed noticed one thing about him was that he was just amazing at chess. Like we're talking better than mm. you are. Like he was fucking phenomenal. Like proper, proper good, whiz kid. proper good. Um, they lived near a park called Bitza Park in Moscow. Very famous park. <laughs> Bitza. Bitza. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Weird word. Um, so they lived near Bitza Park, and it was one of those kind of really cool parks where everyone, like all the old folks, sit around playing chess. So the granddad thought, oh, I'm going to take my grandchild down, uh, Alexander, and we're going to mingle with the old folk. And before you know it, this kid who struggled to socialize became like the most popular kid in the park. Everyone loved him. The oldest loved playing chess against him. He'd whoop their ass in chess and he, he just became really, really popular. Everyone just loved him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then out of nowhere, there was like a few murders that started taking place in the forested section of the park. Three murders, four murders, five murders. Before you know it, there's about 30, 40 murders. Um, and these bodies are being found. Everyone's worried, so everyone just stops going to bits of park. It becomes like a no-go area because 40 murders, that's a lot of murders. That's, that's a bloody lot of murders. It's a bloody lot of murders. And um, so people stop going and people would warn Alexander. They'd say, please don't go to that park anymore. It's not safe for you to be there. But his love for chess was so much that he would carry on going to this park. Um, chess is addictive, isn't it? But I don't know if I would risk my life 
to kind of go and play nah. chess personally. Um, yeah, you've got as... no commitment, have you? We've discussed that. <laughs> no commitment whatsoever. <laughs> so everyone would just say to him, like, we get that you love chess and whatnot, but stop going. But this was his kind of, this was his social life, playing chess against these oldies, uh, being the centre of attention. He loved it, so he carried on going. How, how uh, old before... was he? Um... I think he started going when he was like five or six, but now at this part, I think he's maybe like early 20s, maybe late 20s. Ah, the it move, happened the over like. Move for- yeah, yeah, so the stories yeah. move forward, but my lack of uh, narration skills has meant that I missed that uh-huh. part out. So thank you for <laughs> reminding me. <laughs> so yeah, we, we jumped forward 20 years and I forgot to mention that. So <laughs> yeah, he's an adult yeah. now. Um, still attending the park despite all these murders taking place. It's a no go zone for the uh, most of the city, but this is kind of. This place just gave him so much happiness as a kid, so he can't stop going there. Uh, before you know it, 50 murders have taken place, 55 murders, it just keeps happening, but he's adamant, I'm going to stay at this park with these old people, carry on playing chess. <laughs> and um, he meets a girl at work, uh, they hit it off, even though he's kind of socially awkward. Uh, he says, do you want to hang out sometime? She says, yes. So they go for a walk in the park, they're walking through the forest. Uh, they're getting on really well, even though it's a bit awkward, this, isn't that. Um... And obviously, both of them know they probably shouldn't w- be walking through this forest at dark because all of these murders that are taking place and this maniac oh, yeah. could be out here and he could be striking them. And about halfway through the forest at, um, at dark, it just kind of goes silent and he turns around and he sees that the girl is just kind of hugging this tree and just crying, whimpering. Um, and she's Shit, shaking. she's the murderer. Well, he says to her, he's like, what's going on, man? Like, what are you doing? And um, she says, oh, it's you, isn't it? And he's like, yeah, it is me. It, he was the murderer and she'd just clocked it literally out of nowhere on this first day just walking through the how, forest how did she come up with that uh, she just i think she just, it just clocked she was walking through the forest with him and she just thought oh fuck what if he's the murderer and he was like yeah and it turns out it was why, why, him why would you think that why would she just think that i don't know oh, i'm, I'm confused know, why is she some bloody poirot or what is she miss marple well, or whatever it was not anymore she's, she's dead genius. She's just, Nah, she's, um, but yeah, it was mad. So it turns out it was this guy, and he'd just been luring people into the forest and just bloody, yeah, offing them, man. Crazy. Again, really? it's not a very funny story. I don't know why I told it, but yeah. It's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's that. Because it's scary, Joe Furs, and it's because a it is scary. you're sending out here. Are yeah. you sending out some messages about people no, playing no, no, no. chess no. in our chess club? Just weird, ain't it? Like, you should, gotta be careful, man. It's um, but yeah, fucking. I think it ended up being between forty and sixty murders that this guy did, and um, Had... a bit of a bad reputation for the chess community, which I'm not happy about. I'm not happy about that either. Did she get away? Uh, no, no, no. She died sadly. So yeah, a bit of a sad ending. Again, not a very uh, happy story. I don't know why. How do they know what? How do they know her version of events if if she didn't get uh, away? That's a good question. Are you making Maybe all he this told up? it in interrogation. Maybe he kind of just told people how it happened. I don't know. Do you speak Russian, Jothers? Yeah, when she speaks... No, I'm not even going to try. Nah, not, it's not you, similar. isn't it? Was he, are, you telling, are you confessing something live on air? Just because the guy had a lack of social skills and was all right at chess, it doesn't mean it was lack me. Lack of There's social a lot of us skills, all right at chess, mm-hmm. hanging around with old people in parks. <laughs> There's a difference between chess manages... and swinging out. Different world. <laughs> <laughs> manages to get a girlfriend. You've done yeah, that, how does finally. That happen, mate? Yep. Yeah, Go for a walk in the woods at night. When you visited here, you like going for long walks at night. Mm-hmm, it's true, but I don't. I've never been a big fan of murder. It's not really my kind of ball game. It's not your thing. Nah, I'm a bit. I'm a bit of a worse. I don't like physical contact in general. I'm a bit of a hygiene freak as well. Like, just, nah, I couldn't do it. Joe, I'm very happy you told us that story. Today. I'm not like it's just a really horrible dark story with no joy or anything. But a real dark on the podcast, I might cut that out. But You've just, just thought, ruined the our only... fucking whole show, haven't you? <laughs> it's the only Halloween-related chess thing I know. Um, no, it, it yeah. had to be it had to go in there to serve as a message to anybody who has a, a child chess prodigy that likes murdering people in the park. We yeah. will expose you. We will mention. We not- will. Like we will mention this on our podcast. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Just do Don't not do, it, do that. Do not do Don't it. Do boy. it. Ow, can we move on to something a bit more light-hearted? Maybe like what we've been loving this week. No, nah, I was thinking, Joe. You know what? We should also mention. Um, you said you don't like physical contact, etc. But you have got mm-hmm. a girlfriend. Yeah. And she's also your chess champion. She is. So we mention each week how we train in our chess champions up. I just mm-hmm. wondered if you had an update for us. So I'm training John T. You're training your Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, she's going to play John T. My John T. At chess, we can see who's going to oh, win. Yeah. I've I've been doing a bit of training with my John T. Have you done anything with your Charlotte? And I'm only calling oh, well, them that because that's how you refer to them. 
Mashallah. Um, yeah, so I'm um, I'm seeing her tonight. It's going to be a very chessy night, I think. Um, mm. And without being mean, I, I really don't mean this in a horrible way. I, I don't think we need to do too much training to be John T. Not because of John T, but because of who his coach is. Mm. I think, no, because I think, of what? Because of who his coach is in this, uh, in this scenario. <sighs> like, John T, I think he would be an amazing chess player if he wasn't being taught by, like, an absolute baboon. You think so? Like, yeah, I do reckon so. Hmm. Okay. We're not worried. Well, you sp- I mean, you spoke to John T for the first time today. I actually gave you the phone so you could chat with him, and he's fed you nice so guy, much you bullshit, know. false information to throw you off the scent. <laughs> nah, he's a lovely guy, and I, I do feel genuinely bad that we are going to crush him. Like, he doesn't deserve that. He shouldn't have been roped into this. He's a nice lad, and we're about to destroy his confidence. It's uh, it's not you on. think so? On. I think so. Charlotte is going to destroy him. Really? Is Charlotte in our chess club yet? She's not, you know, no, nah, she, she doesn't like chess, I don't think. <laughs> so I'm not feeling as confident as I'm letting on. Does, but, she, uh, even like, does she even like you, Joe, first? Is she um, just tolerating think... you because she's scared you're going to take her into the woods late at night? <laughs> I think on a good day, she can tolerate me. Um, on a bad day, probably doesn't like me that much. I don't think many people do like me. I'm, I'm not the most likable of people, though. It's no, um, Joe first, come on. If if anybody out there likes Joe, then send us an email. I bet we'll be flooded with them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a count you... next week. So here we go. If you like Joe, send an email to averagejoeschess at gmail.com. Next week I'll do a count. I'll tell you how many people mm-hmm. have responded, Joe. It'll be, do wonders for your self-esteem. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bloody <laughs> lovely, this is. <laughs> but no, I, th- I think she uh, likes me. Um, she, yeah, I th- I'd like to think so, a little bit, hopefully. All right, that's enough. We don't need any more. It's not your therapy exactly. session, as we said earlier. So, And then the other thing I wanted to touch on before we're exceptionally loving, we just mentioned it. We've got a chess club. It's on chess.com. Join our chess club. How many members are we up to, Joe Furs? I think we're very close to 120 members now. I think we're like 117. Bloody hell. I know. That's good. Madden. That's good going. That's cool. So we've, if you join the chess club, what you can look forward to is we have tournaments occasionally. So on Saturdays, we do side old Saturday. Mm-hmm. On Tuesday, we have junk trunk Tuesday. Uh, there'll be more than that coming <laughs> up at some point. We give away diamond memberships. We're about to do that next week. I think we're going to do another one, aren't yep. we? Next week's sure. show, we're going to do diamond membership. We're giving away only a month's diamond membership. I mean, we're not millionaires, are what we, Joe? Only? Not yet. I think that's a nice little gift. It's a, I'd be happy with that if I hadn't already been gifted a year's diamond membership, Joe. First, yeah. Every week, um, and then um, sorry, Joe. Uh, we've also got a code on there if you want a, a month's free trial to chess.com instead of the usual one week. It's all mm-hmm. on there. Check out Average Joe's Chess. Uh, chess club in google have a look there's a link on the show notes here um yeah i'm enjoying the chess club jofers enjoying the interaction not much else going on really because we're pretty what crap else? but what else have you been enjoying now what have you been exceptionally loving oh, had to give this some thought and i wanted a bit of continuity so if you remember back two weeks ago i wasn't enjoying my dog's booby trap dog dog shits outside the yep. garage door Mm-hmm. Last week I was enjoying picking up dog shit because it's you called it nature's glove. They sort of hand warmer. <laughs> I like that. But actually. I think you said, oh, it's nature's glove. I'm not actually putting... When I said the dog shit warms my hands, Joe, because I'm keeping it on the outside of the bag. Oh, wow. You haven't lived, man. Take the bag off. <laughs> <laughs> Just put the hand in next time. But this week, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a soppy one, really. But, you know, as the weather's changing and everything... Uh, and it's getting a bit cooler, but we've had some nice crisp cold days, haven't we? Sunny and mm. crisp. Yep. I went for a lovely dog walk yesterday uh, down a path that's sort of got countryside either side, and there's a nice bench. Cyclists and walkers go down there a lot. And uh, there was a bench, and I just thought, I'm just going to stop walking. I was about half hour into the walk. I'm just going to sit and ponder life for a little bit, sit oh, on the bench. Yeah. Um, and my dog was just being quite good. And I thought, Do you know what? It's a bit cold. And I fancy a little dog warmer. So I went not just, I thought if, if his shit's warm, he's going to be warm. So I just picked him up, put him on my lap. And Aww. he sort of like, he just reclined back. So his hands, <laughs> his hands, he hasn't got hands. he got paws. <laughs> they were sort of caressing my beard up close, up to the top. He's le- He was just splayed out on me with all these bloody... Cute penis and bollocks on display <laughs> just and we were both just sat there with me holding him and people were going past just thinking how cute it was possibly or how weird it was yeah um 
And there is no funny ending to this story, Joe Fuzz. It's just. Oh, I think that's cute. It doesn't always have to be it's funnier. Just cud- cuddling a dog on a bench. <laughs> yep. I think having a bit of fun with the dog. Dog in nah, park cute. benches, that sort of thing. I love that out. Now, that is cute. Um, so mine is a bit of a funnier one. It's. Um, oh, thank uh, God for that. <laughs> it's about time you brought something to the party, Joe. For what you there got. we go. About time. I'm finally coming good. Um, I had a lovely visit the other day. It was um, it was Sunday. It was another cute one. Nice family time. So me, mum, dad, and your dad, my granddad, came round, and um, it was just it was like the good old days, man. Just sharing stories. He, he, you know what he's like. He's just is um is an encyclopedia of old stories from Sicily growing up, and they're just yep. the hilarious. Um, so yeah, funniest grandparents around, and um. He was talking about one of his uncles. Uh, whoa, whoa. Like, Can we say this? Is this going to lead to any... Nah, it's one fine. One of his uncles in Sicily. Oh, it's not that story. Um, <laughs> no, it should be fine. One of his uncles on, in then. Sicily who um, remarried. So his wife passed away. He was lonely. He wanted to remarry. So he remarried this woman. I know the and, one. And Yeah, he remarried this new woman. And um, you're going to have to forgive me for my Sicilian. I don't really speak Sicilian. But granddad said something among the lines of... He was like, oh, you know, she was nice, but um, she was a bit of a, uh, a napata- napatata scotta or something like that. And we were like, wait, what? It's like, you know, a bit of an overcooked potato. <laughs> I just thought that was the most beautiful terminology for someone. He just, I don't know what it means, but yeah, she was just a bit of an overcooked potato. And I was like, oh, that's, that's gorgeous. So, yeah, I love that. So what what have you exceptionally enjoyed? The phrase, overcooked potato, Just or the funny stories, stories, or the whole stories, thing? Just funny stories. That phrase itself was lovely. Um, it came out with another beautiful one recently. Uh, someone in Sicily was having an affair, and rather than just saying, oh, yeah, he was cheating on his missus, or he was having an affair, uh, Grandad said in Sicilian he was peeing outside of the night pot, which I just thought was really poetic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We need to write all these down. There's some classics. <laughs> we could even put them as t-shirt slogans, maybe. Yeah, I love that. But yeah, so just um, good family um, time. I'm going to go around and visit pot. Grandma in a second, I think, if i got time before I go to Charlotte. We're going to take uh, my nephew around as well. So yeah, if you're listening to this, Grandma, well, you're listening to this tomorrow, so it's already happened. I hope it was good. hope you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Fuzz, it's been great. Before we go, why don't we thank our Patreons for supporting us? Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, Casey, Charles, anybody else who wants to join our Patreons, really appreciate it. Um, helps us, encourages us. Oh, massively. Uh, if they could leave us a review on Apple. Maybe even a good mm-hmm. review would be good. Uh, oh, be always nice. helps. That'd be nice. Uh, you could rate us on whatever. I don't know. Just do anything you can do to support the show. We really appreciate it. It yeah, keeps yeah. us coming back each week. Um, and that's all I've got to say on that, Jofers. It's been lovely as usual. I am fucking shitting myself now after all those scary stories. <laughs> I'm just going to curl up in a ball under this desk and stay here for the rest of the weekend. I don't blame you. Now, that was beautiful. And yeah, just to double down on what you were saying, just thank you to everyone who is supporting. Yeah, it makes a big mm-hmm. difference. Big time. Joe first, catch you later, man. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will do. Happy Halloween.